In the past 20 years, I've gotten to high school, I got my GED, and in that time frame, I saw the original Bill Nye TV show plenty of times. If you haven't stayed up to date with Science Guy's post-98 shenanigans, he's been up to a lot, actually. He's the current CEO of the Planetary Society. He's talked about climate more times than a mountaineer instructor with Tourette's. Climate! 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 And he's also starred in some amazing film roles, like this science teacher in a 5.9 out of 10 1998 Disney film. But apparently that star role wasn't good enough for Greedy Old Bill, so he decided to go and get another TV show 19 years later. Bill Nye Saves the World tackles a lot of polarizing topics like climate, artificial intelligence, GMOs, non-binary vaginas, it's so, oh, oh, oh. aliens, not really sure how that last one saves the world, but you, you do you, Bill. I'm not making this video to talk about the topics themselves, because frankly, there's so much bewildering shit going on with the show itself that I would be doing you a bit of a disservice focusing on anything else. So to lay the scene, what really got me interested in this show was that a few years back, Bill and I held a live debate with Ken Ham. Throughout the discussions, Bill and I had an impressively well-researched and articulated presentation without coming off as condescending or personal. Contrast this with Ken Ham, who... And we look at that technology, and we, we, we can't even understand today how they did some of the things that they did. Who says Noah couldn't build a big boat? You know, took a different position. I was so impressed with the way Bill conducted himself that I was legitimately hyped up for his eventual new TV show. It was kind of like a spiritual successor to the original show that made science class fun, but now it would treat its audience on an eye-to-eye -eye level and provide a non-biased, objective discussion of important world topics. <sighs> Only, to my dismay, the show wasn't that at all. And that's what I really want to talk to you about today. Number one, presentation. The presentation of this show is constantly at conflict with its target demographic. The show is intended for people of opposing ideologies in an attempt to persuade them into understanding other perspectives on the topic. If you don't believe in global warming, the show is supposed to convince you why you should worry about it. If you're worried about the effects of GMOs, the show is supposed to convince you why they're beneficial. Sounds great, right? WRONG! Because the show heavily favors sitting around, jerking themselves off, discussing their side of the argument, and minimizing discussion of the opposing side as much as they can. They have these panels of professionals who sit around discussing the topic, but the second somebody with a conflicting opinion tries to talk, Bill Nye just... <laughs> Take this one guy who's just trying to defend crystal therapy, and Bill and I ends the entire panel to shut him up. Work. And I think crystals, if you go to places like Sedona that sit on a crystal bed, and if you are like in a- I've I, been I, to Sedona. And, and Dude, I'm like picking up what you're putting down, and I'm not seeing it. <laughs> yeah. Thanks you guys very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Like, what's the point of even having them there if you aren't gonna let them explain their justification of their stance? Who are you gonna persuade by sitting around fucking jacking yourselves off. I'll give the show one thing, sometimes they do demonstrations with the intention to disprove certain myths and arguments, but this leads the show to the next problem. Number two, it's just really awkward. The show is just really, really uncomfortable to watch sometimes. In the original Bill Nye, every single movement and action that somebody made was dubbed with a cartoon sound effect. In this show, it feels like they intended to do that, but they just forgot to edit it in? There are these big, long, awkward silences. These guys disappeared. There are moments of completely forced laughter. I, I don't know. <laughs> Bill, let me talk to you for a second. Just, just, yeah, go over there. How can we talk about baseball? For uh, everybody watching overseas. These guys disappeared. In 90% of the time, Bill just can't fucking help himself from making evil scientist voices. The DNA is precipitating from the strawberry pulp. Oh, it's exciting. It's abacus of sex. Pitchforks and torches. Yes, boy. <laughs> I'm sorry. Which, in my opinion, is not a good way to present an argument. And I can't blame the show as much for this next thing, but sometimes jokes just fall completely flat. And sometimes Bill will 180 the silence, and it's pretty funny. I like rubbing alcohol, which I keep on ice. But other times, it just makes me feel awkward that I have to sit there through it all. Just a little bit of uh, cold isopropyl. A, uh, a schmink, as I like to say. 
Having an awkward, unpolished presentation for your show is alright, but it suffers a lot more from its next problem. Number the 3. Pacing. The show can never quite decide what speed it wants to be going. Every episode, it splits into a bunch of different segments, Bill providing an exposition on stage with a few visual examples, pre-recorded footage of a celebrity assistant doing a reporter story about something related to the topic, a discussion panel on the topic, a closure section, you get the idea. But the pacing of every different segment is really weird and conflicting and doesn't really mesh well together. Some story segments will be really slow and nice and mellow, and suddenly it'll cut to like a 20 second interview with the reporter, and then they'll go to a five minute panel with experts that feels so compressed with them talking over each other and speaking fast. You're looking for data. You're looking at it in terms yeah, I'm of- I'm looking for so beauty we, in this human case. things relate to me. Right, one last thing for me. He showed up and said, um, you want to kill people to the person who had the you know, Twitter bot handle and they said I had no idea it would do this. The most interesting part of the show to me was the pre-recorded segments. And that's even more perplexing because most of them are completely different from the rest of the show. Some of them would have been better off as just a separate YouTube video. Some of them are like The Office and Tim and Eric having a love child. <laughs> And now I want to talk about the final problem I have with the show. Number five, tone. Is tone the same as presentation? I'm not sure. Either way, tone. The show has a very condescending tone towards its audience, almost like it already expects you to be on its side with every argument, which doesn't make sense because the entire point of the show is to convince people and not belittle them. Almost every segment centering around opposing arguments is filled with mocking laughter and Jim Halpert faces, which, you know, is fine if that's the thing you're going for, but I'm almost certain it wasn't intended. At a certain point in the show, somebody literally stands on the stage and tries to teach you about cultural appropriation while belittling you for being a white person. A lot. So I'm just gonna come out and say it. White people, white people. It's not entirely your fault, white people. Sorry, Stop white. convincing white people that it's real. You know how gullible they are. Sorry, I'm white. You know they just want to be Sorry, I'm I'm white. Why? Chinese tramp stamp. Why am I a monster? But this is this happens a lot, so I'm just gonna come out and say it. White people, I love you, but stop using Asian wallpaper for street cred. I see what you're doing, and it's stupid. Now here's the thing about cultural appropriation as a basic concept. It's not a bad thing. It's not even a good thing. It's just what culture is. Cultures adapt based on existing cultures. When Evangelion, Evangelion, Evangeli, when the Evangelion used a lot of Christian symbolism despite nobody working on it being Christian, it was because they thought it looked cool. And guess what? Nobody gave a shit they did, it was a fucking good series. But the second I put a Dreamcatcher on my wall, oh shit, you can't do that! Native Americans are oppressed! I know it's a more complex topic than that, and frankly I don't have any place to bring it up, but I really can't be fucked to make this thing more controversial. I just don't like being verbally punished for being a white guy. That's all. If you think it ends there, no sir, we haven't even cracked the ice. Get ready for the sexuality episode. Let me preface this by saying you can be whatever you want. You can fuck whatever you want. I don't give a shit one way or the other. But the Save the World treads on this topic really... Oddly. What's oddly? I'm glad you asked, disembodied voice. How about an ice cream themed metaphor for sexual orientation? How about an ice cream themed metaphor for persuading a straight white male into an orgy? This is fun, right guys? Nothing adult about this topic! I understand the metaphor, it's pretty cute. Vanilla is a straight white guy who thinks it's wrong to be anything else, and everyone wants to convince him that they can't choose what flavor they are. But don't you think convincing the straight white ice cream that he's actually Neapolitan is a bit heavy to put on your target? demographic and also you know fucking awkward to watch but I, I guess we're well past that point aren't we we're also gonna ignore the fact that they basically recreated the end of sausage party but you know whatever another honorable mention for this show's track record is its theme song which is pretty eh. bill, 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 bill. hearing the original bill nye intro got me so fucking hyped for class Hearing the new one just makes me think, oh god, here comes Frank and I! Pitchforks and torches! I got no problems with Tyler the Creator, but it's just the most basic fucking beat and repeat song. The entire song just loops itself for a minute straight. That 
that's Bill Nye Saves the World, everybody. I'd cover more, but honestly, the show really doesn't change much throughout its runtime. Just 13 episodes of Bill Nye making evil voices. Sex! And guest panels that last 15 seconds. I will say there's a lot of cringe value in it, and if you can get past that, there's some legitimate entertainment value in it too. But overall, I just think a song and dance number about a person's vagina is probably the point where I'm gonna call it quitting time. It's so, oh, oh, oh.